Hi guys, welcome to the second video in class 7. In the first video we looked at some specific ways that energy can be transferred, including radiation, and we talked a little bit about the greenhouse effect. Um, in this video I want to build on that and look more broadly at Earth's energy budget and how energy moves around between different parts of the system. So why do we care about this stuff? Well, for one thing, uh, we extract energy from this system, like wind and solar. And also, this system is what controls global temperature, global warming. So it's important stuff. So in this video, we'll talk about an overview of Earth's energy budget. Then we'll look at examples of energy transfer within Earth's system. We'll talk about the concept of heat capacity, especially as it relates to the ocean. And then we'll talk about the concept of an equilibrium energy balance in Earth's system. So recall that there's three heat reservoirs on Earth, the biosphere, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere. They all store heat energy and they transfer it between themselves. Now temperature at any given time in any one of those reservoirs is a function of how much energy is stored in that reservoir. And the amount of energy stored, of course, is a function of how much energy goes in versus how much energy goes out. And if energy in equals energy out, then the temperature of the system shouldn't be changing. It should just be stable. And so we can think of that concept in terms of any one of those heat reservoirs, but we can also think of that concept in terms of the larger Earth. And what this diagram shows is energy fluxes into and out of the Earth system. And one of the key things to notice about these energy fluxes is that the total energy in matches the total energy out. So here's the energy in, which of course is coming from solar radiation. And here's the energy out. Some of that's going out just by a simple reflection where it comes down and bounces off the Earth's surface or off the clouds, like we talked about. And then some of that is actually going out by radiation emitted from Earth. So that would be the concept that we talked about in the previous video where warm objects all radiate their own energy. So if you look at this, about two thirds of Earth's outgoing energy is actually from its own radiation. And about one third is actually from direct reflection of solar energy. And of course, if we sum those two outgoing sources in red, they match the incoming. So we have an energy balance on Earth, in theory. Another interesting thing to note about this figure is where's that radi outgoing radiation coming from? Actually, most of it is coming from the atmosphere. So it's actually radiation coming off the atmosphere. A small amount is coming off Earth and going directly out. And then some is coming from clouds specifically. Now what's going on with this part of the diagram? This part is showing uh, ways that energy can be transferred from Earth up to the atmosphere. Okay. Now a big part of that is actually radiation that just goes from Earth up to the atmosphere and then gets radiated right back down to the surface. And we already talked a bit about that loop in the previous lecture. But those are big energy fluxes that are just going from the surface of Earth to the atmosphere and then right back down. So let's look more closely at the ways that the Earth's surface can send energy up to the atmosphere. There's three main ways. One is convection, which we're going to call thermals. Another is evaporation. And another is radiation that we've already talked about. So convection, evaporation, and radiation. Let's look a little more closely at those. Radiation, of course, is the concept we've been talking about, that warm objects like the Earth's surface uh, send off long wavelength radiation uh, in the form of photons up into the atmosphere. Convection, or thermals, is the idea that warm air that heats up near the surface of Earth then rises upwards and convects that heat up into the upper atmosphere where it's lost by conduction. Okay, so thermals are a form of 
convection. And the other one is evaporation. Of course, it takes solar energy to convert water from a liquid to a gas. Okay, So energy gets stored as water is converted from a liquid to gas. That water vapor then goes up into the atmosphere and condenses and releases uh, energy as it condenses. And the technical names for these are called latent heat, which is heat that's absorbed during evaporation, and sensible heat that's released during condensation. OK, so we've talked about how reservoirs can exchange energy. For example, the Earth's surface giving energy to the atmosphere. Let's talk now about what controls how much heat energy each reservoir can hold. So there's three big factors. One is the size of the reservoir. The next is the ability of that reservoir to exchange energy with other reservoirs. And finally is the heat capacity of the reservoir. Now heat capacity is a term that basically refers to how much energy do you have to put into something to raise its temperature by one degree Celsius. So things with a high heat capacity are able to absorb more energy. And here's a plot showing heat capacity. See air is down at one. Wood is at about one and a half. Water's way out here at four. So water has this incredibly high heat capacity relative to, say, trees or air. What that means is that we're able to keep pouring energy into water, and it doesn't heat up very much. And this makes it a great heat reservoir. We can store tons of energy there. And of course, the ocean is the largest heat reservoir on Earth because it's big, it's got the high heat capacity, and very importantly, it's because it mixes and exchanges rapidly with the atmosphere. It's tempting to think that the solid Earth interior is a really important heat reservoir. And there is a lot of heat in there. But because that solid Earth interior doesn't mix with the atmosphere, it's basically irrelevant to Earth's energy budget. So I want to finish this lecture by talking about what an equilibrium system is and what it means for Earth's energy budget to be at equilibrium. So we've already introduced this figure that shows all these different energy exchanges going on by all these different processes. The important point is that, in theory, this system is at equilibrium. And what does that mean? It means the energy inputs to the system are equal to the energy outputs. Okay, and We saw that earlier. It also means that the rate of energy transfer between any of the given reservoirs is constant. So if the system is at equilibrium, things are flowing in and they're being exchanged, and it means that all the, the rate of exchange of all these processes is constant. And as a result, it also means that the temperature of the reservoirs is constant. We mentioned that if the energy in is equal to the energy out of any given reservoir, then its temperature should be constant. Okay. So for example, if you consider the atmospheric temperature, as long as all the energy inputs are matched by the energy outputs, then the temperature of that atmosphere should be constant. But obviously, humans are tweaking things, OK? And changes can happen. Either, for example, you could change the amount of energy being input to the system. And that's going to kick it out of equilibrium. So let's do a hypothetical thought experiment where we imagine that we double the rate of incoming solar radiation. So instead of being 342 watts per meter squared, we make this 684 watts per meter squared. We double it. What happens then? Well, that energy has to go somewhere, right? So presumably, the amount absorbed doubles. The amount reflected would also double, OK? But that amount absorbed of absorbed energy, that means Earth's surface is going to heat up a bit temporarily. But what's going to happen is once it heats up, it's going to start radiating more, because we know that hot objects start to radiate more. We're also going to have more thermal convection 
and we're gonna have more evaporation, okay? So what's really gonna happen is these other fluxes are gonna increase and dump that energy uh, into different parts of the system. And eventually, that's gonna mean that there's more energy going out by radiation as well, okay? So eventually, all the fluxes are going to increase and we're gonna dump more energy. And what that means is that the equilibrium temperature doesn't have to double, okay? It will increase by a little bit because it can have a little bit higher resting equilibrium temperature, but because it's now dumping more energy by radiation, its resting temperature certainly will not double, okay? So in summary, energy comes from absorption of the sun's rays, and it's then transferred out between Earth's heat reservoirs. A couple examples of exchange mechanisms would be radiation, convection, or evaporation. And those are from Earth to atmosphere. Uh, most heat energy is stored in the ocean due to its high heat capacity and its constant mixing. And Earth's energy system is theoretically at an equilibrium where there's a balance between incoming and outgoing radiation. And if we tweak this balance, uh, it's going to change the equilibrium temperature, but not necessarily by a lot. So I'll leave you with a couple concept questions, uh, and you can copy-paste this link to take the quiz. See you in class number eight.